gentlemen, we are gathered here today as representatives of some of the greatest design teams in the world. We are here to listen to a proposal from a Mr. X, a man who is 50 years ahead of his time. A man who is undoubtedly the world's greatest aircraft designer, the daddy of them all. Mr. X, are you with us? Yes, I, I am with you, Mr. President. Gentlemen, you must forgive the extraordinary security precautions taken today. But when I tell you that Mr. X is none other than the man who designed the International Rescue Aircraft, you will understand the importance of security. Mr. X has a proposition to put to us for a revolutionary new type of aircraft. It is perhaps the most exciting moment in the history of our company. And now, gentlemen, the moment has come. What is it to be? An aircraft that flies ten times the speed of sound? A space vehicle that travels the speed of light? If I were able to guess, Mr. X would not be here today. And now, Mr. X, it is with great excitement that we await breathlessly the details of your new design. Well, gentlemen, I thought it would be a good idea in this day and age of uh, speed and uh, things like that uh, to build an airship. An airship? An airship? Beautiful island in the Pacific. Secret base of international rescue. So far, undetected. Outwardly, the luxury home of millionaire ex-astronaut Jeff Tracy. Now, let's have a rundown on the international rescue craft. At the moment, there are five. Thunderbird 1. Sleek, first, and fast. Thunderbird 2, giant transporter, carries all the rescue gear to the danger zone. Thunderbird 3, designed for space rescue. Thunderbird 4, capable of withstanding the pressure of the depth. Thunderbird 5, space monitor, capable of receiving or intercepting distress calls from any part of the world. And I'm telling you, Brains, in no uncertain terms, that we now need a Thunderbird 6. Sure, Mr. Tracy, but can you give me some sort of a steer? I like to work to a specification. Specification? You didn't need to work to a specification when you designed that airship for the New World Aircraft Corporation. That's right. I didn't. And what happened? They laughed. Yeah, that's right. They laughed. And then they built it.
There you are, Brains. Your specially commissioned painting of Skyship One. Thanks, Virgil. It's really great. But I guess that's about the nearest I'm going to get to it for some time. I'm sorry about this, Brains, but I've got this feeling, and I know I'm not wrong. We desperately need a Thunderbird 6. That's okay, Mr. Tracy. Of course, I, I would have liked to have been on the maiden voyage. Sure. But at least International Rescue will be represented by Alan, Tintin, and Penelope. They'll give you a full report. So, you like the painting, eh? Uh, say, talking of painting... Alan? Yes, Dad? You better get cleaned up. Don't forget it's your farewell dinner tonight. Just ten more minutes, Dad, and I'll be through. How's you looking? Great. Just great. I finished our packing, Mr. Tracy. Our packing? Tintin, come here a minute. Certainly, Mr. Tracy. Is there anything wrong? Tintin, Alan wanted to travel to England in an unconventional way. Well, I've organized that. But it's going to be a long journey, and not exactly the way for a young lady to travel in this day and age. You are traveling by scheduled airline. But, Mr. Tracy, uh, I want to travel with Alan. Now, Alan leaves tomorrow, and you leave in two weeks' time. Understand? Come on, mother, over here. You get a good view. Well, I guess we've seen a lot of launchings, but uh, this will beat all. Say, where's Tintin? I don't know that. Strange. Unusual for her not to see Alan off. Here she comes. I know how much this project means to you, and I feel that you, not I, should be making this trip. But of course, you are the one person who cannot be spared. I shall be thinking of you. Love, Tintin. P.S. I stowed aboard the Tiger with Alan. She's what? That's right, Mr. Tracy. She's aboard a Tiger with Alan.
isn't it a lovely outfit? It belonged to my ancestor, the Duchess of Crichton Ward. Well, what do you think, Parker? Oh, I think it's very elegant, my lady. Mind you, I prefer midi skirts myself. But I suppose it's appropriate that you should be dressed like that uh, for the revival of the airship, uh, so to speak. Thank you, Parker. And that outfit suits you beautifully. Well, if Alan's on schedule, he should be arriving at any moment. Uh, yes, my lady. I had to stand that he's been on his way now for two weeks. That's him, Parker. We must go on to the roof and see him land. Come on. There it is, Tintin. Yes, Alan. It looks lovely. Okay, you know what to do. I expect he's coming into land. Blighty! He's coming straight for us! I don't believe it. Hi, Penny. Hi, Parker. Alan, I'm so glad you're safe. You gave us quite a scare. Gee, I like your outfit, Penelope. Yes, I was rather pleased with it myself. Uh, uh, excuse me. All the family send their love to you. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Allen. Excuse me. What is it, Parker? Uh, your haircraft, sir. It's got no pilot. I... I just thought I'd point it out to you, sir. Oh, forget about it, Parker. i finished with it now. Now, you were saying, Penelope... Mr. Hallam, please, don't you understand? It's going to crash into the owl. Now, Parker, what has got into you? Sorry about that, Alan. Don't the crows, it, it's going to land on its own. Parker. Belady? Tintin's an excellent pilot, don't you think, Parker? Parker's face, Tintin. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I can just imagine it. Of course, I saw immediately what Alan was up to, because I knew you were on board. Jeff called me yesterday. I could hardly keep a straight face. Come in. All the baggage is aboard, Belady. Thank you, Parker. Now, there's only one thing left to do before we leave. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage, belady. As president of the New World Aircraft Corporation, this flight is of paramount importance to me. The fact that members of International Rescue will be on the maiden flight enables us to achieve worldwide publicity. In order to make this possible in the first place, we have given assurances to them that the strictest security arrangements will be enforced. That is why the airfield is cleared of all personnel. The passengers are due to arrive in, um, 30 minutes. Contact!
Verge, I can see them. At two o'clock. Okay. I've got them, Scott. Right. Operation Escort. Go. <laughs> This is what I call driving in style, my lady. It isn't every Rolls Royce that has an aircraft escort. Okay, all checks complete. Martin? Yes, sir. Lane? Yes, sir. Carter? Yes, sir. Hogarth? Yes, sir. Okay. Return to your posts and await the arrival of the passengers. Hold it right there. Quickly, we haven't much time. <laughs> with the others and have a farewell drink. We'll meet you in the ballroom. The ballroom? Well, may I book the first dance? No, Scott. It isn't what it seems. You'll see. And now, by the courtesy of the New World Aircraft Corporation, we bring you the drinking of hour. Uh, now, my lady, what will it be? I think this occasion calls for champagne all round, Parker. All round, my lady? All round, Parker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the New World Aircraft Corporation, I welcome you aboard Skyship One. As you know, this is the maiden flight. It is, of course, a great honor for us to have such distinguished guests. You can be assured that the crew and myself will do everything in our power to make this a trip to remember. Well, bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. Okay, one minute to take off. Now we know that the ship is fully automated. Everything is pre-programmed. Height, speed, course. We are all supposed to be trained men. The only way that our cover will be broken will be if anything goes wrong with the ship. Take off now, 30 seconds.
Well, we're off. Come in. Dinner is served in the bottle room, my lady. Well, they've gone. May we have the blinds drawn, Captain? The entire operation of this skyship Lady Penelope is totally automatic. As the light falls, the curtains will draw automatically. Of course. That's just the sort of thing Brains would have thought of. Well, it looks as if we're all set for a lovely, peaceful holiday. Black Phantom, this is White Ghost. Calling Black Phantom, this is White Ghost. Come in, Black Phantom. Come in, Black Phantom. Have disposed of cargo. Operation Ambush underway. <laughs> Calling International Rescue. This is Lady Penelope. Jeff, I want you to send Thunderbird 1 and 2 to a disused airfield 10 miles south of Casablanca. International fixed system 2404, reference E. Ensure that Brains is aboard. This is imperative. Do not acknowledge this transmission. We'll call later with further details. It's going to be difficult. That's what we're paid for. Now, I've had this whole place bugged. I want every word she speaks on this trip to be recorded. Whenever possible, I'll talk to her myself and maneuver the conversation in the right direction. Right. Get to work. Okay, Carter, breakfast is served. Start recording. Morning, Alan. Good morning, Penny. Morning, Alan. Good morning, Tintin. Breakfast over New York. What an experience. This is really the way to travel. Yeah, it's great. Only thing is, as a ship's fully automated, if anything should go wrong with the computer, we could hit one of these skyscrapers, and then we'd really be in trouble. Then, Alan, it would just be a simple case of calling International Rescue. Okay. Calling International Rescue. And now, gentlemen, it is with pride that I present to you Thunderbird 6. Now, so that I'm able to demonstrate this new machine properly, I have built this radio-controlled model. The situation? Man trapped in top floor of burning skyscraper. Thunderbird 6 drives up to the building. The helium balloon now rises. 
lifting a plastic hose into the air. When the balloon reaches the correct height, the reel is locked off. I don't get it, Brains. What's the point? This is the point. And so you see, gentlemen, another international rescue is made possible. Uh, well, Mr. Tracy, what do you think? Well, it's uh, certainly ingenious, Brains. But it means building a vehicle that gives us only one means of rescue. The end product just doesn't justify the cost. I I'm sorry. I'm afraid you'll have to scrap it and start again. Too bad about the wasted effort. Wasted effort, Mr. Tracy. <laughs> What's a mere 28 days? Working day and night. Think nothing of it. We must be descending. I'm getting butterflies. I always do when we lose height. You're absolutely right, Lady Penelope. We'll soon be flying over the Grand Canyon at zero feet. An automated announcement will tell us when it's the right time. Don't worry, you won't miss a thing. There, you can see our exact position. The Grand Canyon. You know I was once hopelessly lost in a jet plane, and then at last I made contact with the ground. Was I glad to hear that voice. You are directly over the Grand Canyon. Your position, International Fix System 2424, reference E. Correction, Captain Foster. International Fix System 2404, reference E. Of course, 2404. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever forget that. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching the Grand Canyon. If you care to take up your positions on the balcony, you'll be in good time to get the most advantageous viewpoint. <laughs> the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. Come across to the other side of the ship. There's an even better view over there. Yes, let's do that. I've been spending quite a lot of time with the stewards, drinking and all that sort of thing. Well, what worries me, they, they don't seem to know as much about the ship as they ought to. Thank you, Parker. I've had my own thoughts on the matter. I'm glad you told me. Yes, 
Well, uh, sorry if I disturbed you, Belady. You were quite right, Parker. Good night. Good night, Belady. Yes, Penelope? I've just had some information from Parker, Alan. I'm a little uneasy. Tell me, what do you think of Captain Foster? I don't go for him, Penelope. He's a little too smooth for my liking. Tell me, Alan, has he been questioning you about international rescue? Well, as a matter of fact, he has. Well, not directly, mind you. But the conversation always seems to lead that way. I think we'll have to go into this situation a little more closely. I don't like the sound of it. The storm seems to be getting worse. I think you'd better come in here. We need to discuss this right away. Oh, well, um, perhaps we are allowing our imaginations to run away with us. After all, everyone's interested in international rescue. It's only natural they should ask questions. Oh. So you don't think there's anything to worry about, Penelope? No. After all, they have all been screened. They're carefully selected men. That was a close one. Put on the edited tape. Right. One thing's for sure. We've got to play this really cool from now on. Lady Penelope, I underestimated you. Calling International Rescue. Jeff, I want you to send Thunderbirds 1 and 2. International Fix System 2404, reference E. Okay, continue recording. Doesn't sound as if we get much more tonight. When I was talking to you just now, Alan, I discovered a bugging device in the lamp by my bed. I wondered why you changed your attitude so abruptly. What's our next move? For the moment, nothing. We know we're being bugged, but we don't know why. We must just be on the alert. Okay. I'll mosey around and see what I can find out. Of course I understand. Mr. Tracy. It isn't quite the thing you had in mind. Of course I don't mind designing yet another one. You know, Scott, one of the remarkable things about Brains is that he never loses his temper. Well, if he did, I wouldn't blame him after all the work he's done. Upset? Me upset? Of course I'm not upset! <laughs> John. Father, I've just received a message from Lady Penelope. It was sent in scrambled electronic code. Right, John. Let's have it. It's just coming out of the descrambler now. It reads, ship bugged, reason unknown. Am investigating. Imperative, no communication from you. We'll contact you when we have a lead. Signed, Penelope. FAB, John. Keep in touch. I don't like the sound of it, Dad. We've got to do something about this. Yeah, but what? Well, why not radio the police at the next port of call? And have the crew interrogated. No. Whoever it is on that ship that is looking for information is probably an agent for a larger organization. If we're to protect ourselves, we've got to wait for them to show their hand. You lead an interesting but secretive life. Your lifeline shows that you will meet many dangers. You will become involved with a handsome stranger. You would be well to let your heart guide you. Well, stone the crows. Beautiful, Alan. But it's far too expensive. 
Right, we'll take it. Or you won't regret it, sir. It will bring you much happiness. Oh, Alan, it's been such a lovely day. I just wish it could never end. The sari suits you very well, Penelope. It was a very kind thought, Captain. Thank you. Did you get anything interesting today, Tintin? Yes. Alan bought me this beautiful ring. He paid far too much money for it, but I'm very thrilled with it. Buying a ring for a young lady is pretty significant to me, Alan. Don't tell me you're going to desert the League of Bachelors. I'm afraid not, Captain Foster. The life I lead in international rescue is far too dangerous to ask anyone to share it with me. For me, at the moment, marriage is out of the question. That's right, Captain Foster. We all of us lead dedicated lives in international rescue. And now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll retire. But wouldn't you like another drink? Thank you, Captain, but no. It's been a lovely but very tiring day. I'm going to bed. Oh, so soon? I'm afraid so. Good night, everyone. So your rooms aren't bugged, but the lounge, bar, and dining room are. All places where I go. It would seem it's me they want the information from. But what? If we knew that, we'd know the answer to everything. Have you found any trace of the receiver? Pockets have no luck. None. The only place I haven't searched is the gravity compensation room. Well, the trip comes to an end in 14 days' time. Whatever move they're going to make must be made before we get back to England. So we'll soon know. I think I can claim to have been to most places in the world, but oddly enough, I've never seen the pyramids. I've never seen them either. Well, we won't have long to wait. We land in 15 minutes. Oh, how dreadful. What is it, Penelope? There's been a terrible air crash. A DX-102 airliner tried to make a forced landing on a disused airfield 10 miles south of Casablanca. Its nose wheel collapsed and the aircraft blew up, killing all aboard. At last we've got it. I've got to hand it to you, Carter. That newspaper idea of yours was just great. Now, complete the editing. I want to hear that final message as soon as possible. Okay, girls, let's go. Don't forget your camera, Penelope. Don't worry, I've got it right here. Well, you see, Jeff, we nearly lost Parker. Huh. Ah, uh, here's the code a bit. We are enjoying our trip and looking forward to our last port of call, Switzerland. Scott, take this along to Brain's lab and get it decoded. Yes, sir. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Tracy. I just love having my designs turned down. Gee, Brains, your beautiful model. Oh, uh, uh, hi, Scott. Uh, yeah, I just slipped out of my hand. Dad wants you to decode this right away. Gee, I, I wish there was something we could do to help them. Don't worry. I've got a feeling it won't be long now. Mr. Tracy. Yes, Brains? Decoding of Penelope's letter is as follows. Interest is in me. Reason unknown. Continue to stand by. Thanks, Brains. Well, we now know that they're bugging only Penelope. They're interested in what she says. Now, what could Penelope say that would mean so much to someone with designs on international rescue? Jeff, I want you to send Thunderbirds 1 and 2 to a disused airfield, 10 miles south of Casablanca. International fix system, 2404, reference E. Ensure that Brains is aboard. This is imperative. Do not acknowledge this transmission. We'll call later with further details. 
perfect. Just perfect. Okay. And what next? Now watch carefully. Tomorrow, we make our last stop. Switzerland. It certainly is a fantastic car you have, Penelope. The only one of its kind in the world, Captain Foster. When those skis appeared out of the bottom, I just couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, it has many other devices, Captain. Many of them still top secret. Switch it to full boost, belady. How are you doing, Tintin? Fine. Just fine. Switch in thrusters. Okay. You decided what you're going to eat? Mm. I think I'll start with avocado. Tintin? Artichoke, please. Likewise. Ah, and for me, the speciality of the house. This is a cute place. It's certainly imaginative. Let's hope the service is as good. <laughs> I guess this is for us. Gee, what a novel idea. It must have been fun traveling in trains like this years ago. Well, let's unload the cargo. As Parker would say, it looks a real good nosh. Talking of Parker, what's happened to him? Surely he's not still outside. But of course. The car is heated, you know. Eleven o'clock. We must go. The skyship is programmed for takeoff at midnight. As a matter of interest, Captain, what would happen if we didn't get back on time? Your dream holiday would just come to an end. And now, Cinderella, we must go. You debugged the whole place, Parker. No need, belady. It was already done for me. There's not a hidden microphone anywhere, belady. They've all been removed. That can only mean one thing. They've got the information they wanted. What now? Parker, what have you to report? Well, belady, 
They've been recording you on a tape machine in the gravity compensation room. I managed to get a look in there. They've been editing the tape, that was obvious. And now they've got the tape machine linked to a radio transmitter. The jigsaw's nearly completed, but not quite. Parker, issue the guns. They're in the false compartment at the bottom of my blue suitcase. From now on, it's emergency standby. Black Phantom from White Ghost. Message will be transmitted 10 hundred hours tomorrow morning. Gentlemen, the Thunderbird machines will be arriving here at approximately 11 hundred hours tomorrow morning. The final phase of Operation Ambush has commenced. Okay. Rewind and stand by. Okay, ready. Fifteen seconds. Calling International Rescue. This is Lady Penelope. Jeff, I want you to send Thunderbirds 1 and 2 to a disused airfield ten miles south of Casablanca. International Fix System 2404, reference E. Ensure that Brains is aboard. This is imperative. Do not acknowledge this transmission. We'll call later with further details. Thunderbird machines should be arriving in approximately 10 minutes. Stand by. If pilots offer any resistance as they leave the machines, shoot them down. I've got it. Penelope, I've got it. It's the only possible answer. They've been recording your voice, right? Right. They've been editing the tape, right? Right. Editing is a form of rearranging. They've been rearranging your words to make you say something that they wanted you to say, and then they've transmitted it. Now, who is the one person who would act on your instructions? Why, Jeff Tracy. Roger, Scott. Understand that you are at disused airfield. Call me as soon as you've landed. F.A.B. Go ahead, Penny. Jeff, this is an emergency. Have you received a message from me? Yes, Penelope. The boys are just about to land at the rendezvous you requested. Jeff, I haven't sent a message. This is a trap. <laughs> Remember, just one sign of resistance from those pilots, and let them have it.
Trying to bring the pace. Oh, thanks, Dad. You gave us the warning just in time. Setting course now to rendezvous with Skyship One. That's right, Scott. The message was a recording of my voice. Now, the quicker you arrive, the better for us. You've got to fix an opposition. F.A.B. Okay, I've received a message from Black Phantom to say the Thunderbird machines were landing. By now, they must have taken over the ships, and shortly, they'll be on their way to rendezvous with us. Right, the play acting's over. Round up our international rescue guests. They're unsuspecting, so they won't be armed. Not so unsuspecting, Captain Foster. Raise your hands, all of you. It sounds as if Alan needs some help. Tintin, I'll leave you my compact. You can keep in touch with the boys. F.A.B. Ben. Come on, Parker. Right, but I... The other one is hostage. Quick! The numbers are even now, and we can outshoot you. You know that. Throw your guns down and give yourselves up. I suggest you throw your guns down. If you don't, you can say goodbye to Tintin. with Skyship One. Right, Scott. At what position do you expect to rendezvous with it? According to my calculations, at approximately 10,000 feet, about five miles east of Dover. Well, all you can do, Scott, is beat the hell out of those machines and get there as soon as you can. F.A.B. Very smart, Penelope. So you radioed your base. That's right, Mr. Foster. You should know that you can't outwit international rescue. I'm not so sure. The game isn't over yet. We have you all as our hostages. When the Thunderbird machines arrive, I've got an idea they're going to do just what we tell them to. Meanwhile, the gravity compensating machine has come to a standstill. The jet engines on this bus are to give it forward movement only. The ship can't maintain height unless the gravity compensators are working. I'm well aware of the situation. We're losing height quite slowly. It'll be half an hour yet before there's any real danger. Martin, go up on the top deck and radio down as soon as those Thunderbirds arrive. Right. Father, I'm at rendezvous point. No sign of Skyship One. I don't understand it, Scott. It's a big ship. It'd be hard to miss. Oh, wait. I can't see it. It's about 8,000 feet below me. I don't get it. According to the New World pre-programmed schedule, it should be at 10,000 feet at this point. I'm going down to take a look. F.A.B. <laughs> Foster, Thunderbird 1 directly above us. Okay, Martin. Right, untie them. I want you all up on the top deck and no false moves. Okay, Father. I'm alongside. I can see one of the stewards standing on the top deck. Otherwise, no sign of life. When Thunderbird 2 arrives, we'll attempt to board her. Be with you in about five minutes, Scott. Okay, Virgil. Dad, there's trouble ahead. Dad, Skyship One is losing height. Why, I don't know. About one mile ahead is an early warning system with interceptor towers. 
The estimated height, 1,200 feet. Below it is a missile site. The way it looks from here, Skyship 1 is on a collision course. The only thing that can save it is its height. But I've got my doubts. <laughs> It's a tower ahead. We're gonna hit it. How far away is it? I don't know. About a quarter of a mile. I'm coming up. Dad, there's gonna be a collision. You'd better alert all emergency services down on the ground. It's a missile base about five miles east of Dover. That may be. Well, the ship swang on top of one of the towers. If that tower gives way or the ship loses its balance, it's going to drop like a stone right onto that missile site below. Come on, quickly! Up on the top deck and move! We've crashed, Foster, don't you understand? Throw your gun away. We're all in this together now. I said move! Scott, I've been listening to your transmission. I've sighted Skyship. I'm coming in straight over the top. Will lower escape unit. Brains is already in there. F.A.B. Is Brains armed? He ought to be. We've no idea what's going on. It's okay, Dad. I've taken care of that. Good boy. Attention. Attention. All personnel in Sector D to vacate site immediately. Proceed with all removal equipment to rendezvous G. This is an emergency. Repeat. This is an emergency. Virgil, pull off! Pull off! Your thrusters are throwing it off balance! F.A.B. Base and Thunderbird 2. We need to decide a course of action, but fast. As far as I can see, any attempt to get near that ship is going to bring a disaster. The turbulence from our motors alone will be enough to tip it off balance. Have you any ideas, Dad? All personnel and vehicles to proceed to rendezvous G immediately. This is an emergency. Repeat, this is an emergency. We need a solution, Gordon, and quick. As far as I can tell, the only way we're going to get them off that tower in one piece is to get a vehicle on that top deck. Nothing we've got would be any good, Dad. Our machines are too heavy. I know, I know. We need something light, low airspeed, high maneuverability, short landing distance. See, I've got the answer, Dad. It's crazy, but it could work. Hey, what's going on? Thunderbird 2 is leaving. Don't tell me they've given up. That's right, Mr. Tracy. We've got it aboard Thunderbird 2 and they've just left. We did all the necessary checks and fueled it. I certainly hope it works. It's just got to work. It's just got to. The top of the tower is crumbling. I'm going to attach a line to the front of the ship to see if I can hold it steady. FAB. What the heck are they doing? Why don't they come in and get us off this thing? You saw what happened when they came in close? Well, what are they going to do? If you let me call them, I can find out. No, no, you don't. I'm not falling into that little trap.
Okay, Dad. Why is it cured? I think it's going to help. Thunderbird 1 from Thunderbird 2, one mile from you. And landed on a grassy stretch down below. Well done, Burge. Well, that was a quick trip. Yeah, well, you see, I've got a tiger in my tank. Okay, Brains, over to you. I'm going to circle the ship and then attempt a landing. Okay, Bray. As you make it, the order for evacuation will be first Chen Chen, second Penelope, then the crew, and finally Parker and Allen. F-A-B. <laughs> Right, Scott. I'm in position. Brains is on his way up. I'm gonna fix a line to this end. Okay, Birch. There's no radio contact with Science Ship 1. I just don't understand it. Something must be wrong. You'll soon find out. Attaching line. Try a rescue with that thing. They must have got it from a museum. You're dead right, Mr. Foster. But I'll tell you something. It's a brilliant idea. I think it's the only chance we've got. Lane, get over on the other side of the deck. Get ready to welcome our guest. Right. As soon as you touch down, I'll open up with my jets. The slipstream should slow you down. Right. Let's try it. FAB. Penelope and Allen. In a few moments, I'm going to open up my jet engines. Hold tight to that rail. Alan, raise your hand if you've understood me. Okay, folks, hold tight! Well 
Well done, Green. Okay. Tintin, you're first. Jump aboard. Oh, no, you don't. Get out of that cockpit and move. Scott, one of the stewards has got brains at gunpoint. Now we know why there's been no radio communication. But what are they going to do, Verge? Looks as if Penelope's boarding the aircraft and the captain's getting into the rear cockpit. Okay, turn this crate around! Oh, what's happening to Brains? Everyone's moving towards the Tiger. There's no doubt about it. The crew in control of the situation. Things look bad, Dad. Hush, hold it a minute. Thunderbird to base. Father, we're not going to be able to hold her much longer. How's the evacuation of the rocket cycle aggressing? Nearly complete, but they want about another five minutes. Do everything you can, Scott, to prevent that ship falling.
We're down! Where's the ball? Down on the left! Thunderbird 1? Loud and clear. Scott, I've just received the okay from the missile base. Evacuation has been completed. You can let her go. Right. Did you hear that, Virgil? I heard. Okay. Release cables on five-second countdown. FAB. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero.
Parker isn't with us. We must have left him aboard the airship. It's too late now, Penny. Anyway, a few moments from now, we may be sharing the same fate. That's our engine gone, Penny. Hold tight. Hold tight, Tintin! I'm putting her down! Okay, Alan! Hold tight, Brains! Emergency landing! Good luck! Alan! say, Alan, that was a fantastic landing. Well, if it hadn't been for Parker, we could have said we'd got away with it. Are you sure there was no chance of him surviving when Skyship One crashed? Not a chance, Alan. I suppose it must be shock, but a few moments ago, I'm sure I heard a distant voice calling, Milady. That's funny. I thought I heard it too. <laughs> and now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you all my new vehicle, Thunderbird 6. Thunderbird 6? I don't get it. Oh, I know what you're going to say, Mr. Tracy, that you haven't approved the plans but how could it have been built anyway? Etc., etc., etc. But nevertheless, I present to you Thunderbird 6. Built, tested, and approved. This is Thunderbird Control. Launch Thunderbird 6. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be it. Look at that. <laughs> Brain, you old son of a gun. I'll buy it. I agree it's a good design. It has been built, and it sure has been tested. <laughs> Thunderbird 6 